Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here are the Lightning Conduit of Heaven Mana Stacker Hierophant in Path of Exile. The Lightning Conduit of Heaven is a transfigured gem and compared it to a normal version uh, which you can only deal damage if enemy is shocked. This uh, version does not have that requirement. On top of that, you also have a pretty high effectiveness of added damage here at 270%, which is quite high for a spell. And this means that combining this with stacking mana and also using arc main support to add a ton of flat light damage is a perfect combination for this skill. And we're also heading up to 12 enemies with this and we get some extra targets here from the quality as well, making it also a quite nice AoE ability to use also. It's really easy to set up this build, even though we are using quite a bit of uniques here. And for the Necropolis League, uniques are quite cheap, so that's really nice if you like to start this out as a low budget build. And we're also able to get immunity to bleed, poison, curse and also elemental ailments with a small investment as well, which I'll go over more later in the video. By using Kitava's Thirst Unique, we get 50% chance to trigger Socrates skill when you spend at least 100 mana. And here we can throw in different kinds of curses, basically triggering them all the time as we go. Currently we got Enfeeble, Elemental Weakness, Conductivity and also Punishment here. To be able to use for curse of using NFM Unique Ring, that will boost our curse limit equal to our maximum power charge with some other stats that greatly benefits to us. We get three potions by default and also another one from being specced into Conviction of Power from our Ascendancy. And this also gave us Endurance Charges for some extra physical damage reduction and elemental resist. The build uses the unique chest Ivory Tower which is a popular item for a lot of builds. Here we get a lot of stats that will improve our character like mana and intelligence. But we also get 30 maximum energy shield per 100 reserved life, which is a great way of adding a more auras to the build by reserving all those life to get energy shield instead. We also get some energy shield region here as well, and also so chaos damage is taken from mana before life, so we don't get instantly dead when we take chaos damage. We're also using a coruscating elixir to help out with chaos damage as the floss makes chaos damage not bypass any shield and if we were get enough mana and regen this floss would not be needed as it would mitigate all of that damage but I feel that at the moment this current uh, setup is not high enough uh, to be able to sustain itself from the ivory tower. However, I would still use a normal ruby flask here in its place either way, so better to be safe than sorry I feel. Shape of Touch is another item that was great for this build as the build stack a lot of flat attributes like intelligence which gives us mana and energy shield. And with these gloves we also get increased to evasion rating from this as well. And here we can now get Grace Aura and also a Jade Flask to boost this further. And at the moment we are at 75% chance to avoid attacks with this on us. Strength is another attribute that we want to get for this build, as we also get flat mana from this and also increase energy shield from the gloves as well. The last unique for this build is called Prism Guard and this shield makes Aura's reserve life instead of mana when sucking in this shield without any cost multipliers as you would normally get from an arrogant support. We also get Reservation Efficiency of Life of Socrates Gems here by 30%, making us able to squeeze in one extra aura for this build. Here we want to put Discipline, Wrath and also lastly Purity of Element. Purity of Element is just a such a quality of life to have as we get Elemental uh, Resist from it and also Elemental Element Immunity from it. You can also go for uh, other auras here if you manage to get elemental elements from another source, which is possible to do. Another aura would be determination for some extra armor or even silvery for the extra uh, spell damage multiplier. And the last aura that we are using is clarity and this we want to link with a arrogant support and basically we're using this to be able to reserve the remainder of our life to be able to reserve as much as we can to get as low health as possible. Arcane Cloak is huge for this build. Once active, we spend a portion of our mana to grant ourselves a buff that will take some damage from hit and also providing us even more flat lightning damage. 
and with this we want to link it with automation support, increase the ration and also Orkan Surge. And Orkan Surge is just really nice to have here as it will proc each time we are using this, uh, providing both cost speed and extra mana region for us. Seal of Power is another buff that we can use to even gain ourselves even more flat lightning damage if we stand on the sigil. And the last skill is our mobility skill called Frost Blink of Wintry Blast. And this is a transfigured version of the Frost Blink skill. Makes the skill have no cooldown so we can use it freely as we are already invested in so much cost speed. It's really a nice mobility skill to use. And here we also put in a Archmage support and it's basically enough to clear basically white and even rare packs in normal tier 60 maps uh, with this on us so it's worth the extra link I feel. If we take a look on the rest of the gear, it's uh, very basic, basically for the weapon we want to get the mana, spell damage, cost speed, mana regen, uh, some attributes is also helpful for its build. And other than that, you want to go for uh, cost speed on your ring and also amulet if you can. And other than that, just try to get as much mana as you can. And uh, intelligence is also really nice for this build and also chaos resist. And life is also something that you don't really need, but it do help out with this build, as it do transform to energy shield from the ivory tower, so it's uh, not a bad stat to have at all. Moving on to the jewels on this build, we're using one large cluster with light damage on it, and here you want to get scintillating idea for the increase to maximum mana and some lightning pen. And ideally also want to go for a storm drinking node as well for even more penetration and some extra lightning damage leech as energy shield. For the normal ones we want to get increased to mana and basically any damage like spell, AOE, lightning and also attributes is nice here. And uh, we're also using these to get most of our immunities for this build actually. By getting two of these with reduced effect of curses and then combining it with one of our flasks with reduction to curses, get ourselves to curse immune as long as the flask is up. We're also using three abyss jewels here with both chance to avoid poison and bleed on them. And for poison, you can also go to get some extra on our boots here. Uh, as the eater of world implicit, you can also change this to bleed if you would need that instead. Also, one of our abyss jewels also have the corrupted blood immunity on it as well. And for a unique one, we have a couple of different ones here. First, we're using a Militant Faith Timeless Jewel with High Templar Dominance on it, and that's for the Inner Conviction passive. And this gives us 3% more spell damage per power charge, and as we always add 4 power charges, we get a boost of 12% damage multiplied from this. And uh, with this, we also get 2 random stats per 10 devotion, and you will get the devotion from all of these pass points that are allocated inside of this circle here. And you will have to check out the number that works for you. If you go to POB and at the bottom you can go and find Timeless Jewel and uh, set it up as you want. And do remember that for this build we don't want any of the bigger nodes to get replaced by another one. So search for total devotion here as high as you can and then look for the top ones. You can mark a couple and then just copy to trade and start to look for the one that you want. I got a very cheap one with just the elemental resist on it, 2% per devotion, which is equal to 22% at this uh, current setup here. There are others that you can go for, like area damage, elemental damage, or even reduced cost of mana works as well. Unnatural instinct is another one that we are using, makes it so all Passive that's unallocated within this radius is granting to us and putting it this location is providing tons of bonuses to this build as you see here So basically it's picking up all of these like mana we get the area of effect here We get some extra cost speed from these a really nice spot to use this on Prentice Pact is another one that we want to use for this build and combining this with Unnatural Instinct which will provide tons of bonuses for us as they do overlap for each other. And for this one we're getting 6% increased light damage per passive that we pick up here and uh, we get 108% uh, from the node inside Unnatural Instinct and we get 60% uh, from these other nodes that we allocated inside of this circle here. 
Uh, you could go for other versions here like uh, Chaos Resist or even go for Energy Shield. However, they do cost a little bit more, but it's great to have if you would need some extra defense. Taking a look on our flats, we're using a Coruscating Elixir as I mentioned earlier. And this helps out with mitigation of Chaos Damage, as I do feel that uh, this setup at the moment don't uh, get enough mana recovery to mitigate uh, the damage from the Ivory Tower alone. Uh, we also lose all life to one, but as we already reserved everything, it doesn't really matter. And this also gave us increased to fire resist as well, also to max fire resist. We're also using a Topos and a Sapphire Floss, which also give extra resist and maximum resist to each respective element. And then also a Amethyst Floss for some extra chaos resist, and lastly a Jade Floss for evasion rate. And all of these flaws have the enchant reused at the end of this flask effect for some automation and we also went with reduced charges per use on the prefix and this makes us able to use the elemental flaws three times and the other one two times without getting charges and this is usually enough to a full uptime at least while doing most content in the game except for maybe pinnacle bosses. And for the suffixes, we are using reduced effect of curses on one of our flaws. Another one have increased cost speed. We have one with regen life per second during flaws effect. And this is going to be transformed into energy shield regen as respect into seal of oath. And then also get some extra increased evasion rating on the last one. For the Pantheons, we're using Soul of Erikali as the major god for the reduction to damage over time. And we also get some extra recovery right here, and also extra chaos resist to damage over time. On the minor guns, we're using Soul of Takahoma. We get some extra fist damage reduction here, and also regen as life per second while stationary. And this also changed to energy shield. And for the Ascendancy, we are using the Hierophant, and Divine Guidance is the first one, providing some extra mana and also giving us Transfiguration of Mind, which makes us increase and reduction to maximum mana, also applied to damage at 30% of its value. Really nice to have here as we heavily invested in mana for this build. The damage taken from mana before life is not doing anything for this build as you need to have life for this to be applied. And as we reserved all of it, no life to be taken from. And uh, that's why we also not spec into mind over matter. Next is Sanctuary of Thought. And here we get 20% our maximum mana as extra energy shield. We get some mana reservation here as well. Area of effect up to 100% and also reduction of mana cost by 50%. Conviction of power 4 plus 1 to power and unit charges and also providing us plus 4 to minimum of each charge so we always stay at 4 charges all of the time. The last one is uh, Arcane Blessing and here we get 20% more spell damage when Arcane Surge is active and we also gain Arcane Surge when we hit with a spell. I put the link to the POB in the description so you can check it out more for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. So what do you think about the Archmage Lightning Conduit of Heaven Mana Sucker Hierophant? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!